Welcome to building a Japanese townhouse. This is a definitely a modern build, like a, today or the last, I don't know, 10, maybe 15 years. Um, this is a Japanese inner city house. So where I'm from, we think of this more as a townhouse, except that townhouses are normally joined on at least one side maybe both and this house is actually separate from the other houses but the separation is going to be mm, like maybe a meter so they're separate but not really separate and there's definitely like this plot has a backyard but that would be public land that wouldn't be part of your property so yeah this is just a really tiny house and trying to cram like as much as we can into a really tiny building including trying to fit the stairs. Now, Japanese stairs, if you've ever been to a Japanese house, they're really steep, even modern stairs, um, way steeper than would be ever allowed in Australia because um, you just, it's so easy to slip and fall down them because they're often even made of polished wood. Um, so in The Sims, we can't really have stairs that are that steep. Um, so I've kind of had to allow a bit more space to fit in regulation stairs <laughs> um yeah here I'm just trying to fit in all the rooms so downstairs this room at the front is going to be like a carport room there's no cars in the sims so you just have to kind of imagine that a tiny little car would fit there uh you're not going to fit your big American SV SUV in there um it's really just for a tiny Japanese car so if you think of like a Mazda 2 that's a large Japanese car a small Japanese car is even smaller. Like those tiny squished up vans, that's what you might fit in this area. Um, and I'm putting in a little entranceway. So you've got a little bit off the street before you actually go into the house. And putting in the balconies, which all have half walls, which I think is a pretty Japanese thing. And you're going to put like your washing on the balcony. That's why they're only one tile wide. They're not really for like relaxing on. They're just kind of for maybe smoking and <laughs> definitely your washing. Um, I'm trying to put in some more safety here, put in some railings. Um, and now I'm going to try and fit in all the doors. And the problem always in The Sims with doors is, The Sims 4 is better because you can have two doors like on walls that are 90 degrees from each other, but you can't have two doors that are opposite each other still. Uh, obviously that's a thing that you have in real life all the time uh, and certainly in a Japanese house where there's super limited space uh, you definitely have those uh, little tiny doorways um, and now I'm trying to put some windows in the thing about like an inner city Tokyo house is you're not going to have a lot of you're not going to have like big picture windows because there's nothing to look out on. Like it's literally your neighbor's wall a meter away. So you're going to have tiny windows that are for letting in maybe a bit of air into a bathroom or letting in a bit of light onto a stairwell, but not really for a view. So the only big windows here are actually the doors onto the balcony, which would look onto the street um, where I guess you might look out of them. But it's it's cramped, so it's not really about a big view. Like it would be in Australia, you know, I've got big, big windows on my living dining area that open out and you can see like a garden between some of the apartments and then some trees in like a public space nearby and in front of like between building areas don't really get that inside Tokyo um, or other big cities in Japan. And I've tiled the outside, which is, or made it, so it's like this plaster cutaway, but the idea is it looks like big tiles, which is, I don't know if it's still so much a thing in Japan, but certainly the older buildings throughout Asia, every time I go over there, I'm like, oh yeah, that's right. Everyone tiles the outsides of their buildings here. <laughs> Um, which seems strange to me where all our buildings are brick here or concrete or rendered concrete and you might wash them off but not really 
Uh, whereas I feel like if you've got glazed tiles on the outside of your building, you really have to wash them to keep them clean. Um, no one bothers washing bricks. Well, I guess you might like high pressure wash them after like 20 years, but no one does it, you know, as a matter of course, the same way you might wash your windows. Uh, not that I wash my windows. Do, 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 do. Anyway, um, <laughs> now I'm just trying to fill in some of the flooring. Uh, fill in the bathrooms and then I remember that the little toilet rooms tend not to have tiles they tend to be wooden floors um, so now I'm putting in wooden floors everywhere uh, I did think about putting in a tatami room especially downstairs and uh, most Japanese houses would have one traditional room but maybe some of the most modern ones families would have given up having a tatami room. Um, I stayed in a townhouse in Kyoto and it had a tatami room downstairs and we did absolutely nothing with it because you got to be really careful in a tatami room. Like you can't have heavy furniture, you can't have a proper bed. So it's just a very different style of living. And yeah, I think a lot of modern families, it's perhaps not as useful, but it is does make a really good shared public space that you can rearrange very easily for different purposes. So it just kind of depends on what kind of family you are. Um, the other thing you'll find in Japanese bathrooms is they'll have this sink area before the actual bathroom and they'll have these all in one units. Uh, so I tried to recreate that by having the same color, but you really like the lighting will be integrated into it. Uh, the power points for your hair dryer and your electric toothbrush, that kind of thing, will be integrated into the sink cabinet thing. Um, and there'll be spots for like a toothbrush and it'll all be formed out of a few pieces of plastic or fiberglass or something. Um, one thing I'm really enjoying about getting the new expansion, apart from you might have noticed I'm building this in Windenburg, uh, which might seem like an odd choice to build a fancy modern Japanese house in old um, Europe but actually a lot of Japanese houses are built in old areas so you'll I mean, maybe not in Tokyo but in other places you will get uh, that really cool mishmash of something brand new next to something quite old um, so that's fine the other thing I like about the expansion pack is it gives me yay it gives me built-in wardrobes which in Japan are a must-have like you just don't have separate wardrobes in Japan. Um, part of that is because of the earthquakes. Like if you've got an open, like a separate wardrobe that's not fixed to the wall in an earthquake, that could fall on you and crush you. Now in Australia, that is not a big issue. I've been in one earthquake in Australia and it didn't even wake me up. Um, but in Japan where you regularly have earthquakes and they can destroy whole buildings, it is a really major issue that your furniture doesn't fall on you. So built-in wardrobes, very popular. Um, even if you've got like a tall piece of furniture, like a kitchen cabinet or something, that would be fixed to the wall. Very important. And I think actually here people are starting to realise that even if you don't have earthquakes, children climbing on furniture and stuff can mean stuff can fall on you. So I'm seeing a lot more furniture that comes with things for fixing it to the wall which is great if you buy, but useless if you rent. Anyway, um, yeah, so now I'm just trying to fit in a little Japanese kitchen dining living area. Uh, yeah, a lot of Japanese people have a couch, but they may not actually use it. They may just sit on the floor <laughs> in front of the TV all the time, but it is definitely like they will have the couch, even if they don't sit on the couch. Um, yeah, and I feel like the dining room with that sort of plastic sort of table and the uh, light chairs, I feel like that's very Japanese. Like, yeah, the Japanese seem really big on like IKEA furniture and things like that. Not, yeah, you'll see like old houses with cool old furniture in them, but if they have a new house, you tend to get new furniture. There's not so much of the mix and match that we'd be into um, or even just like inherited furniture. Like I have a dining table that belonged to my parents or things like that. It's not not such a big thing, which I get guess in part is because it's so cheap. You can afford to do that. Um, whereas here, furniture tends to be quite expensive. So you're not just going to be um, 
buying all new. And here I'm putting in a kid's bedroom upstairs. The idea is that there's like a like a early primary school kid and then like maybe a late primary school, early high school kid. I put in both the backpacks. They don't have the Japanese backpacks, but they are red. So they're kind of similar to those super cute Japanese backpacks. Uh, and then I'm just treating this third bedroom as like a storage room um, where, yeah, just trying to wiggle things around a bit upstairs so that they don't look so rigid. Um, and now I'm trying to sort of, I don't know, give the place a bit more character. Um, obviously, a lot of the Japanese houses I've been to have been like Airbnb houses, so they don't have a lot of character. Um, once you live in a house, you tend to give it character by just putting in your stuff. Like, so from here I can see a hat stand with a dog head on it and a painting and uh, books and a uh, wall hanging and that kind of thing that, like, they're just things that we've acquired over time or that we've made and you just... The apartment would be bare white without all that stuff in it. It wouldn't have any inherent character. Um, so there's kind of a lack of character in this apartment just because that kind of lived-in feeling that a place has is really hard to give in The Sims where you've got such a limited palette of clutter. Um, and there's not a lot of really japanese clutter. Um, yeah. But I have tried to put in some little plants um trying to make this area so right by the door there's a genkan um which you can't really do in the sims because it should properly be a lower area and then you have one step up into the rest of the house so this is kind of like a disabled access genkan um which would be one level but you have typically when you first come into a, a house or even like a school there'll be a tiled area where you take your shoes off and there'll be maybe a shoe rack for spare shoes and then um, you leave your shoes there and step up into the house. You'll also see that in um, in temples and other places like that, which can be really annoying if you're used to Western shoes and you have to unlace your shoes all the time every time you're going, if you're going to a lot of temples going in, take your shoes off. Um, yeah, which I like to wear like Doc Martens boots, so that can be really annoying. Whereas if you buy shoes in Japan, they will have a low back to them so that you can easily step in and out of them without having to unlace them yeah so just trying to decide on what to do with the outside a bit of the house here um i was looking for like a washing line but there's no outdoor washing line um yeah but that's that's definitely a thing here and in Japan to have like a clothes horse that you take outside. That's a thing, right? I'm not crazy. Um, yeah, so now I'm just filling in the outside a bit, putting in the path and then I'm going to put in a bit of dirt outside. Um, I often struggle trying to make a place look like it fits in its environment um, rather than just being a house in the middle of a green square in The Sims. Um, but here I'm putting in a little wall. So if you just imagine, like, typically in Japan, there'd probably be, I mean, the way this house is designed, there's no windows at the back there. So there'd probably be another house that would be attached at the back or where the gap would be maybe, like, a hand span between the buildings. Um but then the gap to the side, because there's windows there where I'm putting in this little park, there would probably be a gap of like a metre, metre and a half so that you could walk down there uh, if you so desired or maybe put a bicycle in there or something like that. Um, and here I'm putting in a little public park. There's a lot of little public parks in Japan if you go around. Um, I'm never really sure what they're for because they don't seem to be for kids. Sometimes they're just a bit of dirt. Um with a bench and a bin <laughs> um, but there are a lot of them around which is nice because typically as you can see from this house there's no backyard space oh here we go into screenshots so you can see here's the ground floor you can see that tiled genkan with the shoe rack in it 
and then a level up open plan living dining kitchen you wouldn't have an oven in a japanese house but i put one in because that's the only way to get a stove and then two bedrooms the parents bedroom looks a bit bare but that's fine uh here's the outside where you can see that kind of really tiled exterior and the little entranceway with some decorations the living room with the tea and the fruit bowl um, decorations and then the kids bedroom with a little bit of clutter school stuff around and then the night view thanks for watching bye